ma'am, how are you? Hi, I'm Stephanie. My name is Stephanie, and I called Dexcon today because there is a big snake loose in the house. We got the call that there is an escaped giant snake. What is going on? I'm here taking care of my brother's animals. He's out of town. He's got all kinds of snakes, medium size, small size, but he, he always calls this one the big snake. Uh -huh. And I noticed I was watering the dogs and it was not in the cage. Oh. I don't know where it is. I got out of the house. Okay, Rick, I'm gonna go around the back door. If you can come in the side of the front here. And we're gonna get on it before sounds, the snake gets too far sounds away. Sounds good to me. God. When I step through the door to go into the house, I see serpents galore. We make a heck of a racket. Everywhere you look, there's a snake of all sizes. This guy is Mr. Snakes. He's got all kinds of snakes. He has the proper permits. I see him on the wall, but he has venomous snakes. I don't know how many. He's not here. He didn't know the big one was going to be getting out. Oh, my God. I mean, the snake could possibly eat any of these. All of this is in danger. You have no idea how lucky you are to be locked in there right now, Chief. Yeah, believe me. This must be the, the aquarium where the snake escaped from. He's in here somewhere in this house. He's big. I'm trying to figure out how he got out of here. Here's a screw loose. Oh, look at that. What happened here is knowing and learning day after day with the handling and feeding that this is the way in and out. With all of the snakes here, there's certainly a lot of feeding taking place on a daily basis. So I'm thinking the big guy's been smelling all the rats around here and then been trying to get out of his box for quite some time. He pushed up so hard that he uh, popped the screws right out of the top and pushed his way out and is in this house somewhere. The fact that Stephanie is calling this snake the big one is really saying a lot considering all of the big snakes I'm seeing here. It definitely has the biggest cage and if it's anywhere near the size of it, we're gonna find it sooner or later. So how'd you make out? Snakes, snakes, and more snakes. Snakes everywhere. The coffee what gets tables. Me though is it, they say it's a big one. There's huge snakes here. I don't think I it's mean, in how here. big are we uh, talking? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. There's something huge under there. Yikes! Is that, is that it? <laughs> wow! There's nothing but snake under there. It's one big square snake. So what we got to do is get the furniture out of the way, go for the head. If that animal bites, at best, Ricky and I will get away with hundreds of stitches. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. God. Wow, God. dude. When we got eyes on it, we finally figured out what this snake was. It was a reticulated python. It's a constrictor. It crushes you, suffocates you, and then eats you. That thing is huge. No wonder she didn't want to mess with that. That's big trouble. The main things to worry about here is the injury of the animal first, the injury of us second by biting and constricting. Here's the plan. I go for the head so we don't get bit. Ricky's going for the body so we don't get constricted and killed. The snake is uh, in a resting mode. Not going to be very happy here as soon as I grab the snake. It's going to bow up, get very tense, possibly start flailing. I would say a good six-foot section of that snake's girth yeah. is twice the size of our arms. Oh, and it's all muscle. And for the size of this thing, I don't know how old it is, but it's been around for years. So this yeah. thing's a player. I got to try to get the back of the neck. If I miss, the mouth is easily as wide as my fingers. And when they bite, they, they will gnaw and tear. It's to the hospital immediately. All right, here we go. She's going to hate this. Whoa, oh, geez. Oh, 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 she's yeah. mad. She's OK, now. OK, I got the head. All right, all right now we, we got, got the rest the of the body. Oh, yeah, she's Okay, oh, here she goes. Okay, okay. she's dead. Oh, All right, here we go. Going that other way. Okay, yep, we're going. This snake is huge. I'm guessing almost 20 feet long and well over 100 pounds. What's making this so difficult is that the snake never stops moving. It's continuously using all of its strength to try to wrap us up and eat us for dinner. All right, I got okay. some of the body. All right, cool. Is that the body's got oh. some of me. Ricky, watch out, he's right behind your leg. Oh, dude, just when I thought Ricky and I had contained and gotten control of this situation, it went south fast. Dude, hurry up, hurry up. Foot's well, almost getting numb. Get when a constrictor starts to wrap around you and constrict, you have to unwrap it immediately because you need oxygen. You can't survive very long without it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I feel my foot getting numb, dude. When me and Billy are trying to get this thing wrangled up, it really got a grip on my leg. It wrapped it three or four times. That's when it nearly crushed my leg. That ain't good. Nope. Oh, okay. God. It's like when you 
Sit on go. it wrong. You cut your circulation off. Oh yeah. Exactly how it feels. Are right, you ready? She's strong. She's very strong. Oh, oh right. here she goes. Make sure she don't get that around your neck. Whoa. All right. So heavy. Oh, she's ticked. Okay, oh, here we go. Right, ready? I'm ready? The key to getting this snake back into the cage without either one of us getting hurt is to move fast. The more time this snake has to wrap around us, the better chances of one of us going to the hospital. Is I'm gonna have to release one part of the head here. Okay. Because she's uh, got my arm and uh, starting to pinch on my arm right. Ah. Okay, we're back up. We got the snake to its cage, but now we gotta get it to cooperate and go back inside. Man, I tell you, we gotta get in here. If she squeezes my arm like she did my leg, I could lose it. She didn't want in there. I wonder how long it takes to cut the circulation off. Back where we started. I'm gonna let go of this head. Go! Getting that snake into the cage at that moment was like the worldwide federation for arm wrestling. My toes are tingly. It cut the circulation off. How was your leg, dude? Man, it's fine, but dude, I think like five minutes or so, you could probably look at an amputation. All right, we'll go ahead and tell her we got the snake back in the cage. The owner's gonna have to replace the hinges on the cage when he returns, but for now, the weight's on top of it. It's gonna do the trick. The snake is secure right here. <gasps> Now, I put weights on the uh, top of this lid there, so he's not gonna push open again, but you can see how gigantic the snake was. Oh, my God. I know, like, she could not freaking believe the big one was so freaking big. Wait a minute, I'm hearing a lot of cicadas. Oh, my God. What's dude, going on in there, Rick? Wow, dude. That's at least two rattlers. We hear rattlesnake reverberating all through the kitchen area. It's coming from every direction, and at that point, I feel like I'm surrounded by rattlesnakes. That sounds like three rattlers. Ooh. Oh, there's one in the corner right there. Oh, dude, yeah, that's oh, a yeah. copperhead. That... head, so that one's not making the noise. There's a hole up underneath these cabinets. Sure, if he gets sure. under that cabinet, we're right. screwed. Okay, you just watch my back, Rick. I got I eyes on back. snake. Nothing above, nothing below. Okay, he's going into the bucket. Here's the lid. Okay, one right. snake secure. The rattlesnakes are putting us on alert. Warning. You advance any closer, we will strike. We do not have a total number of rattlesnakes in this kitchen right now, but we can hear more than one. Okay, I'm gonna spin this kind of this way. Oh my God, it's three snakes. I pull back the cardboard and there are three more snakes in the corner. Two of them were rattlesnakes. The only time you'll see this many snakes in one place is after having several days of rain like we've had here making this the worst snake problem I have ever seen. We're gonna do big boy last because he can strike the highest out of the bucket. I'm gonna All go right. to the second copperhead first. I see it. I'm gonna release the back of this snake and grab the front. Okay, he's coming around. Dude, I got the board. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Watch out, Rick. I got it, I got it. We're going in, going in, right, going in. Down, the other one's down. The okay, other... close bucket, two snakes right, in. Go. Small rattlesnake next. Okay. I gotta separate right. two snakes. This is not gonna be fun. You're going for the top snake here. Yeah. Bottom snake is un unsecure. No, don't make him too mad, Rick. Yeah. He's striking. Let go, Rick. Ooh, he's feisty. The rattlesnake is fighting us hard. He's using an aggressive windmill move to try to get loose from the tongs. He is so mad at this point, if he gets loose, we are in big trouble. He's striking. Whoa! You got, got the board? You got it's the board? Tossed. I got the board. Let's okay, we're coming out. Okay, put the board back. All right. I got rattlesnake board right. back. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Okay, now don't don't antagonize him, Rick. Right. Where am I going in to bucket at? Right, right here. Okay. We're going in nice and slow. Right. Nice and slow. Her heads are down. Nice and slow. Ooh. Trying to strike. Oh, nice and dude. slow. Okay, Ricky, come in. Three snakes secure. Even in the middle of an extremely dangerous moment, it is absolutely critical that we all keep our cool or somebody's gonna get hurt. Good Lord, we still got rattling going on. Okay, at this point, we've uh, secured one giant rattlesnake, two copperheads, and that has not stopped the rattling. We got at least one more here, but that does not sound like the only rattlesnake in no, here. Dad. I really can't believe what I'm hearing, man. After we've caught all these snakes, we still are hearing some rattling. Now remember, we got a rattler and two copper heads in here now. Yes. All right, all right, the rattlesnake's here. So we're gonna jump in right here. Okay, you ready? Yep. And then, you know, on this one, he's so big, I'm gonna try to Keep get in front and on. back. Jeez, look at the size of that head. Boy, this is a big one right here. Back up. Go oh, ahead, Rick. Try Rick, go in, go in. Okay, I'm releasing right. back. Watch your finger, by your finger, by your finger, by your finger, by your finger. The rattlesnakes were big and strong enough that they could use their head to knock the lids off and strike. So Ricky, barehanding those lids, I, I thought I was gonna have a heart attack every time. This corner back here left, a hot water heater and some boxes, so let's clear this one area. All right, ready? Check that real quick, I think we're good. Whoa! 
Oh, there's a big one back there. This is definitely one of the nastiest rattlers I've ever seen. This may be the granddaddy of the freaking bombs here. Dude, this place has already been a nightmare. Are you kidding me? Oh, he's oh, huge. Serious. We've already faced some of the most vicious snakes I've ever seen. And to top it off, we are now face to face with a rattler poised to strike. Oh, oh, oh my idea. god, did you Bad see that? Bad idea. Oh! I'm going head first. Now watch out. Don't let him get him out of the corner. Look out! Oh! Look out! I got the head! He's trying to come out of that hole. Dude, quick, quick, I got it, I got it. Hurry up, hurry up. I got it. We finally discovered why all the snakes were in here was a gigantic hole they were coming up through. Okay, I'm gonna try back in first, okay, Rick? Okay. Back in first. Still, he's a hell, he's heavy too, Rick. Right. Well, he's still striking like a mother, though. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, he struck himself. He struck himself. Sometimes snakes will get confused when they don't know where their attacker is coming from and they'll actually bite themselves. It doesn't hurt them, but it does show they're in attack mode. Okay, okay, uh, don't let go of that head. I don't I, have, I don't have head. it secure. I have the head. I don't have it secure. I, have the I head. don't have it secure. I have the head. Okay, good. Okay, release, Rick. All right, I've released. Okay, you go ahead and put the lid on. Okay, I'm released. Back first. Back is released. Back lid on. Okay, coming out. All Whoa. right, he's in. Nice he's work, Ricky. God dang, he's huge. Whoa. High five on that one. We're not. This is definitely a den. It all makes sense now. There was a hole in the floor from an old dryer vent. When the tenant moved, they left that opening open, and an army of snakes came pouring in. Every snake in here was a viper. Every one of them. Every one. We've got this house clear. We know this because we checked everywhere. It's a rental. We don't have tons of furniture. We just have debris. We know there's no more snakes. <laughs> Hey, Billy. Shannon. I am so glad you're here. There is a huge snake back in the corner behind the bait tanks by the shrimp. My name is Shannon, and I called VexCon today because I saw two snakes by the shrimp tanks, and I wanted them out of there. There's one big one, and then there's a smaller one, so I know that there's at least two back there. They're dark colored. I don't know what they are. I didn't want to get close enough to find out. OK, I'll get right on it. OK, thank right. you. Shannon has done the right thing by temporarily closing down her shop to customers because if, in fact, these snakes are venomous, you definitely don't want people walking around in there. Now, this water moccasin here is a juvenile. Just a few seconds into my inspection, and I see an extremely venomous baby water moccasin. I can tell you right away, that's what it is by its lemon-colored tail. This thing is extremely dangerous. Ooh, very dangerous snake. The baby water moccasins, when they strike, they'll inject all their venom. Uh, they don't have a good ability to hold back in the amount of uh, toxin that they try to inject. Water moccasins are part of the pit viper family, which means they have heat sensing pits located on both sides of their heads. This allows them to identify and strike potential prey in any environment, regardless of their ability to see or smell. They're easily one of the deadliest snakes in the world. This guy's mean. Now that I got the little guy in the can, I need to figure out where this big one is hiding. This bait shop is like an all-you-can-eat buffet. There is fresh bait everywhere. I can see now how these snakes got in here. The pipes from these tanks go straight outside, and there is definitely enough room for a couple of rogue snakes to sneak in here for an easy meal. That right there is a very dangerous snake. He's in his element. This guy is also a very dangerous water moccasin. I'm not surprised to see him in the tank as they love the water. This is going to make catching him a lot more difficult. He's going to be slick, fast, and a lot harder to pull out, and very honorary. Look at this shrimp creole with a side of pit viper. Here we go. 
It's good that the snake is in a contained area, but it also allows the snake to move around more quickly, which makes grabbing him behind the head like a one a lot more difficult. Whoa! Gotcha. Whoa. This was not like the little one. Bigger, faster, and a hell of a lot meaner. Whoa. Oh, crap, dropped him. Bad news is I got four tubs now, instead of one to deal with. Trying to fish him out. It's kind of tough. He's getting in between the plywood and the tub here. Got him. Whoa, I did thread him out that way, though. Thankfully, the snake dried off enough that I can get a good grip on him. I'm not going to let him get away this time. OK, uh, I got two snakes, one adult, one juvenile. Wore out from a struggle in a fight. There's no sugar, no spice, and nothing nice here. I think I have both of the snakes Shannon saw in the bucket. And after looking around, I'm confident there aren't any more here. I'm going to show her these guys to confirm these are the same snakes she saw. I got them, Shannon. Oh, good. Come on around, take a look at it. Are you going to show me? Yes, ma'am. Is that the snakes you Those saw? Those are the ones that I saw. Billy showed me the snakes in the bucket. They looked a lot smaller than I thought they would have been. But when I saw them, they looked like they were enormous. How do you think they got in? I think it's the tubes that are going out. It needs a little silica work around it, and you won't have any more problems. OK, we'll take care of that today, then, definitely. Thank All you right. so much. Take care, ma'am. All right, you too. I'm glad I was able to get these snakes out of here so Shannon can open her bait shop back up. Snakes this venomous have no business being anywhere near people. So I'm going to relocate them to an isolated area outside of town where there is no chance they will come in contact with anyone again. Hi, uh, I'm Billy with VexCon. Margaret Williamson. I'm Margaret Williamson, and I had snakes in my house. Multiple possibly poisonous snakes in one dwelling. What is going on? We owned several of these houses up and down the street. We came over, and we went inside to clean up because the house has been empty for a couple of months. Uh -huh. And I raised up a mattress, and there was I don't know how many snakes. And they were just slithering and moving around. And Any I, idea? How no much? idea. Margaret is preparing the house for a family to move in in the next couple of days, so it is imperative that we get all the snakes out of here today. We're going to get some equipment out of the truck, and then we're going in. Ugh. I hate mattresses on the floor. As soon as we walked through the door, we could tell how scorching hot it was. Not only does it make our job harder, but it also makes the snakes more aggressive. We are disassembling a bomb. One wrong move, the bomb goes off. We don't know what we're dealing with, OK? The worst part of a snake job like this is they can be hiding anywhere. One wrong move by us, and they can strike without warning. I want to start with this pillow right here. I'm going to use the long arm of this rod to move that pillow first. So be on standby. I don't know what we're dealing with. We have to lift and check every piece of furniture and everything on the ground to determine the snake is not hiding in there. Did you see something move over there? Something, dude, something moved over there. Rick! Right there, look, right there. Dude, that's a copperhead. Copperheads are part of a pit viper subfamily, which includes rattlesnakes and water moccasins, all of which are extremely dangerous and potentially lethal. Don't move, dude. We got definitely venomous snake. We are now disarming a bomb for sure. That thing goes off, we're dead, OK? Get this here. I'm going to use this as a shield, dude. He's at least three feet long. The oh, tail's coming God, right here, Ricky. Worse. See his position right here? Yeah. OK, I'm going to put this bucket here. I'm going to use one of these rags here to put into the bucket so when I get the snake in there, right. it immediately goes under the rag. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right, exactly. It'll hide okay. a little bit. Yeah. From it. Using your hook, can you come in about right there and get him moving so we can get so eyes on this tail guy? Comes this way, you say? Oh, You're I on tail. Yeah, You're on tail. Now. Okay, good job. Whoa, 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 go. Don't get him too mad. I have him pinned. That is definitely confirmed copperhead for definitely sure. He's poisonous. He's okay. striking. Oh, okay. yeah, striking. yeah, he seems striking. Okay, I got him. I'm going right. very gently. He's striking. Yeah, see if you can get him covered. Thank you. Good job, Rick. Got lid going. Pull out. OK, we have part of this bomb defused. At this point, we have no idea how many snakes we're dealing with. Even though we have this copperhead secured, we are far from breathing a sigh of relief. Come in with our shields. All right, you ready? Okay. I'm going to use mine as a fulcrum first. Watch slowly, slowly, slowly. Whoa, 
Oh, oh God. We lift up the mattress and we see another copperhead and a rattler. Usually when people call in about a couple of snakes, they're long gone by the time we get there. But the fact that we've already found three, all bets are off. There's no telling how many snakes are in this house. Okay, whoa, get out of the way, Rick, get out of the way. I got the mattress, you go. You I go. have them under the board. You get that snake. Ricky is pinning the rattler with the cardboard oh under his foot while we're trying to catch the copperhead. This is a second copperhead. And we try to get him toward the back there. You got that rattlesnake secure, right? He is under this cardboard. You get that guy, and then we'll get this dude. Ricky, we go. I got him. A secure right, on this one. Him. I'm dragging him across. All right. He's going in the bucket with a lid. He's in strike mode. Oh, okay, but I got him secure. Lid going on. All right. Cooperate. Okay. All right, good okay, good. now you reset. Okay, you get behind for... this, and I'll hold the mattress. Okay, right, you good? The mattress now. You ready? Watch out, Rick. And it is a rattlesnake. Rattled. Oh, he's cocked. Rattlesnakes kill their prey by injecting large quantities of venom through their fangs. Okay, I got the rattlesnake. I'm going into the bucket with him. All right. Okay, into the bucket, guy. Hear him? Oh, yeah. Okay, box down. He's secure. Okay, this room's clear. We've checked this room thoroughly. There's nothing left here. Let's go check the other rooms. Having three pit vipers in one room indicates this is prime real estate for snakes. I hope this is the last of them. I'm at the Wiesner residence working on relocating some bees. As I started opening up the shed where they were located, I realized this was a massive hive, much bigger than I expected. <laughs> it's a lot of bees, mama. As I'm going through this, I'm looking for the queen bee. She's a lot bigger with shorter wings. I got this trap for her. When I see her, I'm gonna go up on her, grab her, and using that queen, I can draw the rest of them in. So, watch out, queenie. I gotta keep pulling these boards off. I do not know how high up this nest is actually gonna go. Whew, this is a big nest. vibrating and the saw was getting the bees really agitated despite the smoke. So I was hoping to get this job done quick. Try to get them to calm down. Cool your jets there, guys. I hope this don't go all the way to the top, man. If it does, we could be dealing with as many as 50,000 bees here easily. The more bees I found, the less likely it was that I was gonna find the queen. <sighs> I gotta keep going still. This thing's taller than me, man. <laughs> I just finally got to the top of it. I got a ceiling joist up there, so that's gonna do it, man. That's the whole nest right there. It's gotta be 20 to 50,000 bees right here. This is absolutely crazy. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is clear out my mess here and start vacuuming the bees up. It's a specialized bee vacuum. It'll safely vacuum the bees up without killing them, and then I can get them relocated. However, I'm still vexed with trying to find this queen in so much chaos. All right, time to start sucking. Sucking a lot of bees, man. Oh, there's gotta be 50,000 of them in here, easy. I mean, there's just so many freaking bees. They're getting mad, too starting to really fly and swarm up bad because they don't like this vacuuming I'm doing. Ow! Is there one right here? One got in my suit. Ow, can somebody slap me right here really hard? Somebody hit me right here as I'm, yeah, smash it, yeah, hit it. Bastard. Damn, that sting in the back really hurt. I mean, I got nailed back there, it hurts. I've got to separate the honeycomb from the inside of the wall here. And then once I get it separated out, I'm gonna go ahead and put these honeycombs full of honey into these buckets here so we can actually use the honey. This is where the queen should be. I'm looking for her, but I ain't found her. I couldn't find the queen. The bees are swarming, getting up into my suit, stinging me. This job's getting more and more challenging. There's 50,000 bees to deal with. It's gonna take a freaking while. Golly. Well, I think my bee box is full here. Look at that, full of bees. So let's go ahead and put that over here. Go ahead and put our new bee box in. So let's turn her back on and get the rest of them out of here. 
I'm about halfway through removing the bees. Still no queen, but she may be in the box I just filled. Had to take my glove off. I can't work these rubber bands very well. Hang in there, guys. We're almost, ow, god dang it. I'm trying to be nice to these guys and they're stinging me. So we're gonna go ahead and set this into a bee box, the Billy Bee Box. As you can see, the bees really like it. Voila. Although they protested a little, the bees are staying in the boxes, which means that the queenie is probably in there somewhere, even though I didn't see her. Hopefully the bee bumbler will be able to tell. Hey, if you're ever following a Vexcon truck, keep back. You never know what we're carrying. Loading the bees, I took the client a special gift to thank her for allowing me to save these bees. Is that for me? Yeah. I brought you some honey. Oh. How about that? Oh, and a bee. Uh-oh, still one in there? Yeah. Is that the queen? Nah, <laughs> I didn't find the queen, unfortunately. Oh. But I did get all the bees out of there, though. And it was a big nest, one of the biggest I've seen in 23 years. Are you serious? Yes, I am serious. It was just absolutely amazing how many bees were in there. So this is safe? So, like, yes, it sure consume? is. Let me go ahead and just test it for you. Let's see what it tastes like here. Wow, that's really good. You're gonna enjoy that. Yay! Meredith? Hello, yes. Hi, I'm uh, Billy with Vexcon Pest Control. Hi. How are you nice doing, ma'am? Nice to meet you. My name is Meredith Price. We were hearing noises pretty much all over a side of our house, and it was scaring my children to death. And me. Can you say hi, Billy? Hi. <laughs> you sure have a lovely family here, ma'am. Thank you. Is it just the children hearing the noises, or have we're you and your husband, hearing, everybody's we're hearing all noises? Hearing them, yes, and this one likes to bang on the wall and make sure that they hear her, too. It kind of sounds like boing boing. Stand boing. It doesn't sound like boing boing. Well, it sounds like a moose is in our house. Maybe. It's loud. Something's in the wall, in the ceiling. They haven't actually been able to sleep in their room for a long time. Y'all aren't sleeping in your room? They okay. retreated to mommy and daddy's room. I mean, it's so loud. Y'all mind me going into your room? Say not at all. Let's go, ladies. Let's go take a look at this. Oh, very cool. So, I need to really understand where we're hearing these noises. A so, lot of them around there. Okay. That corner of the house. And then in the, the wall, kind of right in here. Underneath where the bookcase is out in the hall, the storage so shed. Why, why did you mention the storage shed? Are you hearing noises there as well? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, very so good. It's just all over. Uh-huh. Well, so the key to catching whatever's in the walls is finding the home base. There's a storage area downstairs under the bedroom, so I'm gonna go check that out. If you ladies can find something to do for a couple hours, that way I don't injure anybody chasing my monster around. Okay, ladies? <laughs> okay, this is the area uh, below the girls' room. The gap under this door could support activity from a mouse to a small possum. So now I'm looking for an entry point to the underside of the girl's room here. Whatever it is, my concern is that they're gonna chew on the exposed wires, creating a ripe environment for a house fire. Some grease marks up there. Furry animals uh, leave rub marks or grease marks because there's oil on their fur. So when they're moving around, they leave grease marks and oil marks everywhere. Whatever these furry creatures are, I'm sure they're making their home inside the house to stay safe from any predators out in nature. I got one more spot over here to check out, so let's do that real quick. I, I think I heard something. Oh, I know I heard something that time. <laughs> ah, it's a squirrel. See, this room shares the same walls as the girls' rooms. I'm positive they're hearing the squirrels running up and down the walls at night. That's the noises. These squirrels built one heck of a house up here. They're a definite danger. With all that exposed wiring in that storage room, it's like a Roman candle about to go off. I gotta get these squirrels out of here now. <laughs> I'm gonna lie and wait and see if any come out. Now it's time to go head to head with the squirrels in the storage room. Hand catching can be tricky and dangerous, but it's the only thing I can do to get these squirrels out of here fast. Oh, there he is. Okay, okay. Set this up. We got one crack at this. Whew. 
Boy, I had a lucky break on this one. Thank God he went up under a tennis racket. Put a flashlight on him and get a look at him. See, there he is. His butt's contained. Now, problem two, it's hot in here, man. Look at me sweating. I gotta get him into a cage pretty quick. He's not gonna make it too long there. Let's get him out of there. Here we go. If things go as planned, this should be easy. I get the squirrel into the trap and I'm out of here. All right, using the blankie. I'm gonna try to cover his eyes. So he can't really see what's going on. I'm gonna cover the squirrel's eyes. That way he doesn't freak out when I try to grab him. Ooh, he's starting to resist. Okay, now we're gonna pull him together. <sighs> Sorry, little dude. Sorry. Just didn't want to get bit, bro. All right, here we go. Back flip. Full quarter twist. Whoop -sha. Got any friends, dude? Man, one down. I hope there's not any more. I think we've got one in the corner right here. So what I thought was going to be an easy job just got tougher. There's definitely more than one squirrel in here. Okay, I got him trapped over here. Oh, blind him, blind him, blind him. Whoa, whoa. Jumped on me, huh? Squirrels are quick, man. And when you're in a confined space, they can make you look slow and silly. Okay, I'm blinding him with the light, blinding him with the light. Whoa, 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 whoa. Blind him light, blind him. Whoa. Oh, jeez. For over 20 years, I have safely and successfully hand-grabbed many squirrels, but I gotta stay focused. It's not uncommon for one of these little fellas to get you when you ain't looking. I hate golf. Squirrels on the golf course, you know. I'm gonna start aiming for them. Hold on there, Chief. Bomb! Oh, jeez, don't you bite me, dude. Mm. Oh, he's a fighter, too. Okay, I got him, I'm putting him in the trap. Ow! Ah! I got him right here, though. Boom. Ah, it bit me again. Boy, this one's a fighter. Man, he bit the hell out of me twice. You know, I like a good chase every once in a while, but this guy is starting to annoy me. Wanna go in there, boy? Come on, come on. Get in a cave. I got a really nasty bite on the elbow. I thought by now I'd be out of here. Not. I have just heard another noise somewhere over here. At this point, I have no idea how many squirrels we're dealing with. They're literally coming out of the woodwork. You hear him? He thinks he's pissed. All right, here we go. Oh, whoa! Jeez! Oh, he's a big one, too. Oh, my God. What are you, like a pregnant mama? He is a beast, too. Watch it. Uh -oh. That's a monster freaking squirrel, man. A monster freaking squirrel. If that guy bites me, I'm serious. He could take like half my freaking finger off. These squirrels are feisty, fast, and not happy to see me. Whoa. Come here, boy. Come here. Whoa, whoa. I'm gonna use this tennis racket. Oh, what's up? Oh, you want some of this? Whoa. I noticed immediately wasp nest above on the right, below on the left. I was hoping I didn't get stung just trying to knock on the front door. Oh, you're Hi. here. Uh, my name's Billy with Vexcon Pest Control. Good I'm to meet Jackie you, Billy. Well, my name's Sean Lewis, and we have a red wasp problem in our house, so we call for help. What's going on? This house was built in 1888. We have recently bought it and begun to restore it, but the problem is it hasn't really been lived in full time since 1959 or so. They're everywhere. They're in the walls. They're in the attic. They're, they're everywhere. It is a historic, lovely little house. We absolutely fell in love and intended for it to be this nice, happy restoration, and instead it has been a constant wasp sting. Whoa! Yeah, they're everywhere. Jeez. And it stopped the restoration because if you swing a hammer and hit a wall, dozens start coming out and popping you no in here. No kidding, you got a lot mm -hmm. of them in here. They Whoa. Them. I need to do an inspection outside and up in the attic. You're saying that's the worst area, right? Yeah, I don't go up there. 
I'm gonna have our homeowners stay in the back roomed part of the house where it's finished. That way they don't get stung during the extermination. Now it's time to find out what I'm up against. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm trying to determine where all these nests are. I know there's one there. I've got a secondary nest, third one on that window, fourth one on that window, fifth one on this soffit, sixth one on the peak, seventh above the wire, eighth on that soffit there, nine, a gigantic one. It's blowing my freaking mind how many areas I've got to penetrate with a fog to kill these things. This is the worst wasp job I've seen in 25 years. I mean, this place is infested. Red wasps have no redeeming value. You can't make candles out of them. They don't produce honey. They're really not good pollinators. They sting, hurt, cause uh, medical and property damage. Like cockroaches and fire ants, they're a plague. I just kill them. There's no point in relocating that nightmare anywhere. So I'm gonna attach this pyrethrin can to the tip of a pole. That way it can reach the top echelons of the house without having to get too close and get stung. The pyrethrin's gonna attack the wasp nervous system, ultimately killing them. It's time for some unholy retribution. Oh yeah. I've never seen this many red wasps on a house. If I was on a ladder, oh my God, I'd just be getting tore up. This pole idea really bailed me up. Well, just as I say that, here they come. Oh, they got me. I gotta stay, I ain't giving up, man. If I give up, that many more live. God, just keep pouring out of there. Watching them drop out like coins on a slot machine just makes my freaking day, man. All right, good. I have wrecked the outer perimeter, but the problem isn't solved. I saw a lot of them retreating into the heart of this attic. This pole's not gonna help me up there. Here we go. This big bad wolf. God. Oh, no. There's a buttload, man. I almost walked right up on him. Man, this is extremely dangerous. If I alert these guys. I gotta tell you, the attic is a nightmare. As bad as the outside is, the attic is worse. There's at least three times the activity in the attic, and I devastated the outside. I, I couldn't imagine there would be even half the number I had on the outside. These things are highly attracted and sensitive to light. They're not going to see me very well. They're going to go right for that light. If I blow this, I am screwed. Oh, they're starting to move. Oh, they're getting mad, too. Please, Pyrethrin, please, Pyrethrin. I'm counting on the Pyrethrin to stop these wasps dead in their tracks. Because if I miss, I'm in big trouble, man, because they're mad. Knock them out. Knock them. Don't let them fly. Come on, guys. Freaking die. It's starting to get really dangerous up here. The pyrethrin's in the air, making it smoky where I can't see. It's easily over 100 degrees, and I'm trying to balance in a small space on all of these cross beams. Oh, they're gonna come. Look at them, see, it's starting to move. Whoa! Jeez. Man, I got them mad. Right now, I'm trying not to move, and it's not easy, man. They keep coming right at me. If I jump, they're on to me. Okay, I'm blinding them with the light, blinding them with the light. Whoop, 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 whoop. Did not work. My back. Oh! Wow! Oh, they got me. Damn, right in the freaking shoulder, man. These red wasps, they don't just sting once. They sting as much as they feel like. Oh, jeez. Oh! Got me again in the hand. Oh! Oh! I got a lot of issues. They're coming at me high, low, left, right. I mean, I didn't know where to run. Starting to take flight. Starting to lose a little control. Of oh, geez, right in the head. Okay, we're going. I got a double fist it, dropping the light. We're going at it. They're trying to slip past my fog here. I'm gonna have to back up a little bit. They are really coming, man. I can't see what's going on. Going for my light. Whoa. Man, if I let up on either hand, we are screwed, man. I gotta keep bringing it. Gotta keep bringing it. I think I got him. Wow, man. Had him all over me. Got him dead, though, man. There are casualties and body parts all over the place. I can't wait to tell them what I've done up here. It didn't look like a happy death either, man. They came after me with everything, but it just wasn't enough. I was able to get out of there alive. The wasp, however, they are dead. Hey, how are you? Hi, I'm uh, 
uh, Billy with a Vexcon Pest Control looking for Megan. That's me. Megan, nice to meet you. My name is Megan, and I called Vexcon today because we had a porcupine problem. The office informed me you were having a serious problem with porcupines? Yes. I've been out in the yard in the garden area working, and I've seen these two things that seem to be with porks that <laughs> stick up, and, like, you get close to them, they growl and stomp their feet. You sure you sure it's porcupines? I think they are. Really? I'll be dang. So I'll show you. OK, cool. I have never seen a porcupine out in the wild in my entire life. So to be honest, I'm still a little skeptical. This tree had fell a while ago, and there's some holes. This is where I've mainly been seeing them. Yeah, something was digging right here. It looks like when that tree kind of flipped over, it created a cavity under there. Porcupine, you say? find out. I don't get porcupine calls. First thing she showed me was an uprooted tree, which makes a lot of sense. A large rodent like a porcupine would easily be able to make a den out of that. A little holes dug all through here. Must be coming over here for the water. Get a little drink, run back to the hole over there. Uh, you can see some dig marks in the soil coming around this way, so it looks like we got a path established here. Porcupines are herbivores. That means they dig for seeds, they like to eat roots. They burrow, just like a lot of rodents do. Now, I'm just gonna do an investigation. I have full access to the property, you don't mind? I don't mind anything. Okay. Just please get rid of them. They're very scary. Okay, Megan, I'm gonna get on top of it. Thank you for okay. um, the Thank call. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. To figure out where these porcupines may be hiding, I'm gonna start by checking the hole we saw on the other side of the house. Over here's where I'm gonna start my inspection. It got a lot of digging, uprooted grass here. Something's definitely been in here. Look at this. I've got hard evidence here. Yeah. During my inspection of the den, I found conclusive hard evidence that we're dealing with porcupines when I found the quills. That is a porcupine quill if I've ever seen them. Look at that. My God, that's a big one too. Now that I'm sure we're dealing with porcupines, I'm gonna grab both my throw net, my hand net, and a can of cinnamon oil in case I need to flush them out of a hiding place. All right, let's go find out where these guys are hiding. Holy crap. So I'm walking around the corner expecting to have to hunt for these guys and bam, they're right there in front of me. That has got to be the biggest porcupine I have ever freaking seen. Look at the size of this guy. He's like a wild boar. Oh, the second one. They run in pairs, mates till they die. The female, the smaller one, the larger one, the male. After getting eyes on both porcupines, I figured it'd be easier to get the female first, use her to try to pull the male in. They're life mates. He ain't gonna be happy about this. These things are dangerous from the front, dangerous from the back. Look at the size of the quills. One of them could go right through me. Right now, the female's starting a thumping pattern. She's got me on full alert, warning me. You get any closer, your butt's getting quilled. A lot of people think a porcupine can shoot its quills, but it can't. However, that doesn't mean they aren't a weapon. When a porcupine comes in contact with their enemy, the quills will release and embed in their skin. Whoa! Hold on, Chief. I don't need you interacting with me here. With his giant male porcupine stomping and growling behind me, I need to catch this female right away. If I have two coming at me at the same time, I'll be in big trouble. Whoa! Oh, you want some of this? Come on. Woo, she's mad. She's popping quills everywhere, too. I got the female. The male's upset, obviously. I'll try to hang you up in this tree real quick. Whoa! The uh, male's obviously upset with me here. Whoa! Ah! Whoa! I'm trying to get the female secured in the tree, and the male is eyeing me up, ready to attack. This is not a good situation, man. I got a throw net for the male. This is a circular throw net. I'm gonna have the rope attached to my right hand, and if everything goes well, I should be able to throw this net right over the male, and then I've got them both secure. Oh, she's upset. I went ahead and left the female porcupine in the smaller net, mainly because the big boy was so big, there was no way he was getting in that net. If he gets under that house, I got problems. Boom! Got him! Okay, we got the male caught. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I got a dog pin over there. I'm taking the male over to secure him. He's too strong. Come on, Chief. Oh, he's getting away! Crap! The throw net works great with most animals, but I've never had to catch a porcupine in one. It's tricky because the quills actually prevent the net from completely surrounding them. Now there's quills all in the net here. Man, he unloaded on this net. Going for a second throw here. 
got him. No, lost him again. I've never had this much trouble trapping a critter in a net before. This is not going to be as easy as I thought. One of the most impossible, inconceivable things I've ever seen. Something with so many friggin' spikes and quills getting out of a net like it's greased lightning. It blew my mind. Jeez, this guy's Houdini. Oh! He is not happy I got the missus. The more I throw the net and miss, the angrier this porcupine is getting. I need to get this guy secured fast or pretty soon he's just gonna start attacking me. Man, I got him mad. Whoa! Every time I thought I had this guy, he slipped right through like he was buttered up. I didn't think I was ever gonna catch him. Boom! Finally, I was near the front porch and I got a real good bite on him with a net. I was able to go ahead and pull him in, just like Santa. Okay, I'm going to the dog pen with him. The owner removed all their dogs from the property until the porcupines are gone. So I'm gonna use their empty kennel to contain these guys until I can get them into a cage for transport. Yes! All right, let me let you out there, buddy. Okay, go ahead and walk on out of there. Oh! Man, they bite from the front, quill from the back. Porcupines are fast. If you're not paying attention, you're gonna get nailed. Can't say it went perfect. So I got the uh, male contained in the kennel. It was time to go get the female so they could be reunited. Got some good news and some bad news. Good news is you're about to be reacquainted with your husband. The bad news is I got him. You do. Okay, you two. I don't want no jailbreak here. All right. Hold on there, Chief. I got your wife. No funny business. Okay, ma'am. Go ahead, there's your husband. Oh yeah, you want a piece of me? So once I got them both into the kennel, I had to get them into the carriers, realizing at that point, I've only completed half of the job here. This female's very aggressive down here, so I'm gonna try to get her first because she's getting the male all upset. The main thing is to move slowly. They will defend themselves, and I'm in too tight of a space here to mess up. Whoa! So once I had them both contained in the kennel, it was time to use the carriers, and I kind of pushed them up against the outside exterior fence to force them into the carrier. Okay, female finally walked in, so I'm gonna tip this up. They can jump right out, man, and if she does, she's gonna be quilling for me. Okay, got the female secure. Now going for the male. Boy, he's not happy. Okay, come on in, Chief. Come on. Okay, come on in there, buddy. Okay, cool. He's in there. Ooh, look at that, man. He's sticking. There we go. Okay. We gotta get him back to the truck. Here we go. Ah, oh, calm down. Okay, ladies first. And of course you, sir. These guys sure put up a good fight, but now they're ready to be relocated to a place where they will no longer be a nuisance. And I'm happy just to get out of here without too many puncture wounds. Okay. Is that the shed, sir? Yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. Um, where did you see the snake? Okay, it's right on the corner where you can't see. It's on that backside corner. It's uh -huh. cold, about, I say big as a $50 gold piece or something. Better outside than inside. Um, if you could go back in the house, don't let the uh, pets or the kids out, that'll be great until I can get this thing secured. You got it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Oh, no problem. Rattlesnakes are the most venomous snakes we have in Louisiana. If I was bitten and I didn't seek medical attention immediately, I could die. Well, this is uh, something during the inspection I needed to see. Why is this snake here? 
Uh, this is a rodent burrow. They track rodents, that's what they eat. They smell them and they go into these burrows constantly. They even get up in people's attics. Believe me, they're excellent climbers, swimmers, diggers. They can do it all. Uh, he may be in there right now. I'm kind of poking around. Oh, what's this? Judging from the bottom of the skin right here, we're looking at about a three to a four foot snake. And if it's a rattlesnake, that's nasty, dude. If he's inside that shed, he's got me anywhere I'm standing, man. I mean, I'm, I'm just a freaking sitting duck. Rattlers, they have excellent camouflage. This guy could be right in front of me, ready to strike, and I wouldn't even know it. This is bringing back bad memories. When I was in the uh, Air Force, I got a call. There was a shed about this size with a rattlesnake in it, and it's the only time I've been struck by a venomous snake. One fang caught me in the top of the boot, the other fang hit the leg, venom ran down. I had a hell of a rash. It didn't get into the bloodstream, but it was extremely bad. And uh, a little weirded out, man. I gotta go into this shed. I gotta pull all that stuff out and find a rattlesnake. And of course, there's a lot of uh, wasp in there too. So one way or the other, something venomous is gonna hit my ass today. I can feel it. Rat's nest, he's gotta be right in here. about to strike. If I don't make any sudden movements, the snake will be calmer, but I've gotta be extremely careful because I'm well within his strike range and rattlers are very unpredictable. Well, he's pretty too. Yeah, he's shedding his skin. Oh, I'm losing him! Oh, I've lost control of the situation here. I got him only by the tail. I've got to be very gentle with the guy. Don't want to hurt him. He ain't hurting nobody. I don't want him to hurt me either. This is how it went down last time I got bit. Just like this. Right now, the snake has the upper hand. I've got to move slow and be extremely cautious. <laughs> Oh, if he turns, I'm dead. I'm right on top of him here. I gotta free him, he's like, uh... Oh! There's his head right there. My hand was inches from him, dude. Man, he's really got himself wedged in here. Okay, plan is I'm gonna have to let go of his tail. He's too wrapped up, man. So to get this situation secured, I'm gonna have to let a little anarchy ensue here. So here we go, I'm gonna let him go. I'm letting him go. Oh, he's taking off. But he's going up higher now. He's coming up over here somewhere. He's right there, see him? Now that I've got his head secured, I can move some again. He's stuck in there. The only thing I can do is get him by hand. Here goes nothing. He's got venom leaking already. Rattlesnakes have hollow fangs that are just like hypodermic needles, and they're ready to pump venom into you at any time. Oh, he's a freaking 
freaking heavy. God, this thing's heavy. I better put him. I knew it. I knew it. I gotta let him go quick, man. I don't have much of a grip. He can turn any second and get me, so I gotta be faster than him. I'm gonna drop him in the bucket, get the lid on it, and hope to God he don't get me. Three, but we can't count. Two. Whoa. Nah, I gotta get the tongs. <laughs> can't risk my camera, man. by a freaking eyelash. All right, I gotta get this in. Oh my God. I am absolutely wore out. I am gonna tell the customer I got the snake though and get him out of here though. He is a very dangerous reptile, a very dangerous snake. With grandkids and small children, what a nightmare, man. When I'm doing an inspection for yellow jackets, I'm looking for like an airport runway where we got wasps zipping out of a hole in and out. When I see that, then I can identify and find the nest. Looks like it was right over in the back side. Oh yeah, there they are. Coming in and out of there, very freaking aggressive this time of year. Super nasty. All yellow jacket hives start the same way in late spring or early summer. The queen builds a small paper nest to lay her eggs, which then hatch and become the workers who will continue to expand the size of the nest while the queen continues to rapidly lay eggs. By this point in the year, the colony can easily have 5,000 angry wasps flying around. We got the playground equipment right here, and the little girl's room is on the other side of this wall. She's literally under siege by these bombarding maniacs. Very aggressive, they sting unprovoked. As you can see, they're all over me right now. I can see the holes in the back wall which serve as the access point for these wasps and how they got in here in the first place. Can't even get close to them without them freaking reacting. You want to react to some? I'll give you something to react to. Okay, here's my problem. I don't want any yellow jackets escaping where they can come back later after I'm gone and sting these girls. So I've got an idea. On our truck, we carry fire extinguishers. I figured we could freeze the nest with CO2 just knock them out fast, knock them out now. Now, I can't use the CO2 outside of the wall, so I'm gonna use this can of pyrethra for that. And of course, inside the wall, we're gonna flash freeze them with some CO2. We found the nest. That's not the problem. It's locating it in the wall and killing the nest. I'm using a stethoscope, and when I put it up against the wall, it'll help me determine exactly where that nest is. I'm gonna tap on the wall and get these guys all buzzing so I can zero in on the exact location of the nest. Okay, after using the stethoscope, oh, I can hear a lot of activity in there. I was able to determine that nest is right here. I'm gonna cut a hole so I can insert the nozzle of the fire extinguisher. And I'll use some tape to secure the edges so none of these wasps try to sneak out and get me in the process. I can really hear them buzzing in there bad. They're pouring out the front right now, I guarantee it. Every little bang just gets these guys absolutely aggressive as you can imagine. It's time to start the treatment. Here we go. Right now, what should be happening is the wasp are being suffocated and frozen by the CO2 and the fine green powder the extinguisher emits to smother a fire. Some of the wasps may get blown out through the hole, but I'll be able to kill them once I get back on the outside. Now, I'm gonna take this back up so none of them come in, but I gotta run outside to make sure things are going all well. Got 
Got a few that are locked out. Uh, I wish y'all were in there. It's inevitable that there will be a few stragglers trying to escape and hang on to life, which is why I have the pyrethrin. The pyrethrin will attack the nervous system and ultimately paralyze and kill any of these guys still flying around. Merry Christmas. Not too many are coming out. These were all the ones that are foraging around from outside. Things are going very, very well, though. Whoa. Almost nailed me there, didn't he? All right, I think I got this situation pretty much under control. If I hadn't frozen them, they'd be pouring out of here right now. I'm gonna cut out a piece of this wall so I can remove the nest. If things went as well as I think they did, I won't get attacked when I rip it open. Here we go. Oh, yeah, frozen solid. Y'all just chill while I get the rest of this out. The fire extinguisher was a perfect solution for this situation because this nest is huge. They're definitely chilling. They build their nest in a multi-tiered layer like that. Yeah, this worked out excellent. As you can see, they're frozen solid in their tracks. And look, I'm standing out in the middle of the day and there's no yellow jackets. I want to remove the entire hive so that there is no chance of these wasps coming back here to set up shop again. All right, here we go. Let's take you boys on out here. <laughs> ah, let's see what's going on here. Looky here. Right here is the queen, and she's still alive, but barely. Let me show you the difference here. Put the queen right there, and just a regular old yellow jacket. I can tell it's the queen, because as you can see, it's slightly larger than the others and has an ovipositor, which she uses to lay the eggs. This queen will no longer lay any eggs in her lifetime. God did not save the queen. The best thing about finding a queen is I know this nest is dead. This queen will send no messages out, no pheromones out. She will not instruct for this nest to be rebuilt. Now the kids can have the room back. I'm gonna let them know that everything's cool. Is that like a plastic uh, trash bag blown in there? No, dude, that's our jug. We couldn't be that freaking lucky, dude. That's the jug. You think that's the jug? That is our jug. You nervous? Yes. As soon as we get out on the water, we notice the jug in a marshy area in a completely different spot than when we left it. I'm hoping we can finally land this alligator once and for all. It's right there. That is the jug. Okay, it's showtime. Gary, man, I don't like you in the water down there, brother. We're too shallow to use the motor, man. I gotta tell you, this isn't good. We had eyewitness accounts that this jug was moving. The gator can literally be right up underneath the boat right now. All right, about him where I want to be now. Here I come. Good job, Gary. Where is he? So you can check in the jug line, huh? Be careful, man. <sighs> oh! You gotta be kidding me, man. This gator eats all the chicken and avoids the hooks? This may be one of the smartest gators we've ever dealt with. So what do you think, Gary? Is the uh, gator wise to us? I don't know. We got one more jug. Let's go look, see. You think we're going to be that lucky to, to have the gator I don't know. today? He's, this alligator is like Houdini. We may be frustrated, but we're certainly not going to give up. There's still hope the gator is attached to our other jug line. There it is. There's a jug, and it's down. Oh, yeah, look at that. I couldn't believe it, man. We got a jug down. We got it down. Now we need to make sure we got an alligator on the end of that jug. Right there, there's movement. It's like a whirlpool. Oh, oh my God, did you see that? It's got to be like 11 feet. I'm not, I mean, jeez, dude. I got him, I got him. You got him? Right, hold on, I need another surf rod, dude. We got to have another right, surf rod. I got one right here, Gary. Whoa. We're trying to get a couple of hooks stuck into the gator's back. That way, we can pull ourselves closer to it and try to get a noose around the gator's neck. You hold this one. Gotcha. Don't let slack in it. Stay where you are now. Oh, Look at that alligator. Is. Oh, jeez, he's big. Is he running, Billy? Now he is. I'm letting slack out. I'm letting slack out. Got him, too. I got him with you, too. I got him with you, too. You got him good, good, good. You ready? Oh, my God, this guy's heavy. Might have to let some slack. He's oh. pulling on. Did you lose him? No. OK, good. One hook came out, though. I felt it. Oh, crap. I just need to come up. Come up, alligator. I don't wonder who's got the... You got the head, dude. God. Good job. You got the head. I got the tail, then. Hold up. I'm trying to pull a boat to him. Hold up. Oh, Jesus. The problem is he's looking at us. Oh, yeah, he is. Uh, that's a bad angle to catch him on this no, whip. Uh, the worst. This is like catching an alligator in chocolate water. You can't even see. He is going to pull her in. Oh, no, he's yeah. not. 
It's time to lasso and haul him in, bro. There it is, right there. Good, Jenna, good, Jenna, good, Jenna. Nice work, Jenna. It's in his mouth. Oh, Jesus. He's going under. Did you get him? Oh. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Bailey. You, you got, got him? She got him. Oh, oh God. Wait, 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 wait. Wow, man. So instead of getting the entire noose around the gator's mouth, we only got the top jaw, enabling this alligator to basically slam down and bite anything in sight. No, wait, pull this stop. way. Pull this. Okay. Stop. Top you drive. got him on the team. Watch him. What are you doing? As we're wrestling this gator, one of the poles falls into the water. Jana's immediate reaction is to try to grab for the pole, but it almost cost her her hand. We got him by the teeth, Gary. Before we can do anything else, we need to get control of this situation by putting a rope around the entire alligator's head. Okay, going around this way. Okay, we're pulling this way. I got the rope now, Gary. Oh, sorry, Jan, I burned your leg. Watch out, you bit the boat. Whoa, move your foot. Uh oh This is crazy, man. The alligator is actually doing a death roll inches from our feet. Don't you pull him in this boat. Okay. I Did got you it. get that, Jenna? Yeah. Oh, is that right? I, think the I need that step. in. Watch yourself. Oh, we pulled out. Jenna. Uh, reach in. I got him. I got him. Get it. Good, Jenna. Good, Jenna. Cinch it hard. Okay, we're around Cinch the Cinch it tight. Now. It's not enough. Yeah. That's not enough. Okay. Hold what you got. Got it. Don't move. I won't. <laughs> What's up, buddy? This gator is way too aggressive to try to pull him into the boat and tie him up. So Gary is going to go to the water and pull us to shore to try to secure the alligator there. I've got to have that rope on that angle right there. You ready? Throw it. Get on that side and I'll give it to you. <clears throat> right, I need that rope, Jenna. You ready? OK, I got him, Jenna. You got him, Billy? I got him. I swear to God, I got this guy. He ain't going nowhere. What's up, bro? I need to get to the land. Pull the boat, everything, Gary. I got old boy here. I can't move. I'm stuck in the mud. I had to turn my back on the alligator. Let me tell you something. You don't trust anybody until you can turn your back on an 11-foot alligator with him holding the rope. I'm going to hold oh, this he's line. He's going. Oh, death roll. I got it. If you can tie it to the cleat, Gary. Don't you let him in this water. Oh, jeez, Gary. Get ready. He's going in the water, man. Don't let him. I... <sighs> Billy, give oh. me a little slap. Let go a little bit. OK, ready? I got to get on the lane. OK, bro. I'm trusting you. I got him, I'm bro. I swear I will not let go of this line. I got to get up this hill. I'm feeding you, feeding you, feeding you. I got the mouth. Feeding Keep you, got the mouth. Me. I can't see. Keep I'm feeding you, bro. You're good. You're good. You are good. You're still good, Gary. Oh, bro, don't fall now, though. Don't fall now. Now. Yeah. Now. Y'all get on the boat and get over here. OK. Gary makes it over to the shore, but Jen and I, we still got to get over there, get the gator up on land, and tie it up. There's no way we can drag him up right here. He's too heavy. My truck. I'll go get it. Pull it tight, Billy. <clears throat> Pull it tight. This rope is on his top jaw. I got to go down there and hold his mouth shut. Gary's going to get on top of the gator to close the mouth while Janet and I pull him on shore. Billy, you have to pull that rope up. Don't let him go, man. I got to get on it. Billy, pull. Come on, Billy. Oh. Billy, pull. Go! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stop. My truck has really pulled a lot of animals, but never an 11-foot alligator out of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, my name is uh, Billy with Vexcon Pest Control. Uh, my office uh, just informed me that uh, you have a rooster yeah. situation. It is rough. I've had a couple months of rooster crowing, and so I got tired of calling animal control, so I called Vexcon, trying to get some control over it. When the rooster he starts, starts about crowing, five, he wake you up. Do you need to be up at five, or is that annoying you? Yeah, I normally get up to at six thirty. You're using an hour and a half every day, yeah. and a little batting. Right. Well, if you can show me where the area is, let me see what okay. I can do for you, sir. Okay. I'll get right on it. Roosters crow to proclaim their territory. Although people think they only crow in the morning, they will actually crow any time during the day or night. I think he's roosting in the trees right there at night. Oh, so over here. Yeah, along right, the yeah, this whole area here. Right here. Gotcha. And I went back to check out the area, try to find out where this rooster was, and there was a line of trees there that he likes to reside in, mainly for the shade. OK, well, I'll tell you what. Um, I'm going to get this rooster for you. Appreciate you. OK, thanks. Roosters will generally spend their daytime perched up off the ground so they can look around for their flock. But since we believe this guy is by himself, he could be hiding anywhere right now. Although 
the rooster is currently contained in the backyard. If I spook him, he can easily jump a fence and end up running into a neighbor's yard or even worse, onto a road where he could cause an accident. So I'm gonna go ahead and call for backup so we can surround him and keep him contained. Ricky. Hey, Billy, what's up? You know that major intersection in uh, Bozier, the, the first one with the light? Yeah, I know it. I just need uh, you and Chris over here to help me. It's a big infestation. I need help. You never call for backup. I know I never call for backup. All right, man, I'll grab Chris and we'll head right over. Oh, man, if I told him I wanted him out here chasing down a rooster, he'd be pissed. Look, I never call for backup, so I knew when I called, my office was going to be alarmed. So I thought I'd have a little fun with him. Thanks for coming, man. Me and Chris show up in a full-blown panic, think Billy's about to be eaten by a bear or something. All right, what do you got? Believe it or not, it's a single thing we're tracking. You got a gator back there or what? It's faster than a gator. An African water mongoose? Oh, a Mexican rooster. A rooster. A rooster. Oh, man. He needs help with a chicken. Come on now. Me and Ricky are just kind of looking at each other like, really? We chase that rooster into that intersection. We got a major car accident. So I need a guy like over there, a guy over here, and a guy over there. I want to come in like a three ways. The three of us are going to surround the area to create a perimeter and work our way towards each other until we grab the rooster. He's in here somewhere, guys. I mean, I heard something. Hey, Billy, you have, have eyes on him over here. You got eyes on him? If you're behind the fence, he's directly in front of you. I was within five feet of the rooster, man. I snuck up behind it. Because of the distraction in the front with Ricky and Chris, that rooster had no idea I was there. All right, he's got about, uh, I'd say, quarter-inch talons on him. This one I hurt. Those talons, that's the number one weapon, man. They're like spike daggers. Come on in closer, Ricky. He's coming over the fence, Billy. Stay there. Get him, Billy. Roosters are extremely fast, lightning fast. You almost have to be like an NFL receiver. You gotta make cuts on a dime and you have to have speed to catch a rooster. So it turns out Billy did need our help. Catching the chicken may be a little harder than you think. Good one, dude. Four hands, two from me, two from Chris, simultaneously hit that rooster, man. That rooster had nowhere to go. You got the talons to yeah, I got him. Hold on, wait. You got him. Get him like this. After getting out here and getting on the job, I could see why Billy uh, needed a hang. You bit me already. Right. You're in an open area, and you're having to, to catch something that has a center of gravity uh, a lot lower than you do. And really, the only way to uh, to, to trap and, and, and corner that guy is with multiple people. Chris, well, now you can add to your forte. You're faster That's than right. a Mexican rooster. I got a rooster on my resume now. <laughs> this rooster's done his last cockadoodle do on this block. Hello. Hey. I'm uh, Billy with uh, VexCon, and this is uh, Dave. Thanks for coming out so quickly. Right. We got the call that you were dealing with a very serious situation. My name's Ron Malansan. This is my wife, Amanda, and we have a fox trapped in our patio. It's enclosed. We have a four-year-old. She left a little crack in the door. Lo and behold, there's a fox back there. Generally speaking, foxes are not aggressive, but any animal that feels trapped or threatened always poses a threat of being dangerous. At this point, we're going to go around back, get some equipment, take a look at the situation. We will report back as soon as we catch this okay. fox, OK? Thank you. They fear no one. They'll literally trot right in front of you and don't care if you're standing right there or not. It's pretty scary. We're afraid that it's going to bite one of us. We got a fox in a small area. It's going to be tough. I got leather gloves. I've got an animal snare. It's going to be nuts in there. I think I got the right protection. Let's go. You never really know how a fox job will turn out. Sometimes they're very cooperative, and other times it turns into a complete disaster. It's a red fox, too. The red fox is the largest of the 12 different species categorized as true foxes. It seems like we're about five, six feet here, and he's like, his ears, his stance, the hair on his back is like, mm. one more step. Buddy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's going to bite the crap off Yeah, us. so what we're trying to do here is see if we can handle and touch the fox and place him into a cage. We don't want to use the snares because there's windows, glass all over the place. You ready, bro? See if I can get close to him, see what happens. These gloves are Tell me your fox. hopefully bite-proof. Come here, Fox. Oh, I got it. No, I guess he's not wanting to be scratched behind the ears. Oh, they're fast. Oh, hang on there, Chief. Oh, yeah. Whoop. Whoop. 
So it appears this fox is not going to cooperate. We have our work cut out for us. We want to try to get this guy without doing any damage to the porch or ourselves. Whoop. Now, come here, Chief. Here. All right, so if he goes in there again, you might have him. You can't have foxes here. No, nah, go to the work. We're gonna get some chairs out of your way there, Chief. We don't wanna hurt you. This fox has way too many things to hide behind, so I wanna clear out some of the furniture to give us a better shot of catching them. Okay, Chief. It's getting close to party time here. No, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm hoping he'll see that we have him cornered and he'll give himself up. But that may be wishful thinking. This guy doesn't seem too eager to make our job any easier. The animal jumped on my head. Whoa! Oh, there he went. Come on. Try to snare him. At this point, it's pretty obvious the fox is up to the challenge and ready to put our agility to the test. So much for hoping he'd give himself up. Be careful, it's about ready to attack again. Whoa! This guy is crazy, man. I have never seen a fox jump around Whoa. like this before. We need to be real careful this guy doesn't have rabies. He definitely seems more aggressive than normal. Mm, come here. Uh, come here. Come here. Watch out! Whoop. Whoop. Got it over here. As soon as I see this guy go into the little kid's house, I know this is our opportunity to box him in and grab him. He's got to be tired by now. All right, you ready? All right. All right, I'm gonna reach over and grab by the scruff. I'm trying to distract the fox while Dave reaches in to grab him by the scruff of his neck. Nice. I got him by the tail. Oh, I got this side. You think he'll come and turn around? So much for being tired. This guy is feisty and full of energy. The chase is on again. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Got it over here. This one's putting up a good fight. Got him. We Finally get him secured, and now we've got to get him into the cage before he gets loose again, or decides to take a bite out of either one of us. Yeah. Oh, 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 Don't let him oh, bite oh. you. Don't let him oh, bite Oh, I know, I know, I know. Look at them teeth on that side. Thanks. Oh, oh, I'm losing them, losing them, losing them. It is very apparent now that this is not a fox we want hanging around any kids. I don't think he's rabid because he looks healthy, but this guy is definitely mean. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, ow, ow, ow. Oh, got him? Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, you bit me. Ow. Ow. I'm trying to let him know that we're here to help him and get him back to his native habitat, but he's too freaked out now. He keeps nipping at me with his really sharp teeth. He hasn't punctured the skin, but it hurts, man. <laughs> you want to put a trap? No, come on, Chief. No, Chief. Hey, oh, come down, come down. Come down, come down. Uh oh. No. Come down. No, come down. Come down. Come down. No, don't mind me. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Finally, after all of this running around, we get this fox into the cage. He is definitely one of the feistiest foxes I have ever dealt with. Man. Whoa, dude, he's freaking right there, huh? Okay, Gary, what's going on, brother? I got two major calls right now, and one's a really big emergency. I'm gonna take the guys. We're going 30 miles west for a big alligator in a ditch. Okay. Five miles down the road at a little airport, there's a crop duster trying to land. He can't because there's an alligator in the middle of the runway, and he's low on fuel. Take this group and get. OK, ladies, y'all ready? Yeah. To the airport. Let's try to get the skater out of here. Got the gator right there. I got an airplane flying, and he's just about out of fuel, and we got to get him off the runway. We arrive at the airport, and immediately we see the pilot coming in for a flyby and try to scare the gator. This runway might look wide, but the gator is capable of running at 35 miles per hour. At any time, he could easily dart in front of the landing plane. It's too big of a risk. The flyby did nothing to scare the gator, so we've got to act fast. All right, coach, let's rock it. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Let's go. Let's hurry. we got to hurry. The one thing about this job that's going to be very challenging is we have no time for a plan. If we do not get this alligator off of the runway, that airplane is going to crash. 
Hey, girls, I'm going for the head. I'm gonna get behind you. Hey, y'all stay right here so we don't go towards the pond. I'm hoping I can get the gator's head while the girls jump on the gator's body. We'll tape him up real fast, carry him off the runway so the pilot can land before he runs out of fuel. Watch that tail! Oh, back, Jenna! I'm trying to distract him. I got it, I got it! Whoa. Man, I got him mad. How much time you got left in fuel? Okay, back up. Whoa! The gator is obviously really upset, and he's not interested in moving in the direction we want him to. Oh, jeez, don't you bite me, dude. I'm going for the head. Jenna, watch out! They wrestling with it right now. Just give them a few seconds here. We'll have it. Yes, sir. Watch your tail, watch your tail! All right, all right. This is intense. I know the pilot is running low on fuel, and the gator is not cooperating. At a certain point, I'm just gonna have to go for it and jump on this thing. Let's get this gator out of here so he can land. Watch out, Billy. Whoa! The alligator likes to fight from the front. They like to see what the hell they're gonna fight. So I kept distracting the alligator while the girls came in from back. Girls, go ahead and get behind the gator. I'm gonna distract him. Y'all go for the body. Go! Get him, Go! Get him, get him, get him, get him. Get him. Oh, jump up. I'm right behind you. Good job, girls! Whoa, they just jumped on him. They'll have him. Good deal. You got the tape? Oh, yeah, I got his, I got his legs. You got the tail. Okay. All right, pick him up. Are right, you ready for the tape on the mouth? Yeah. Girls are kicking some butt. Okay, ladies. Now, we still got a situation here, though. Oh, we got to get those legs. We got these Otherwise, legs ready. this guy's going right into the drink. We got to hurry. Objective here is off this runway fast, just to keep hurry. everybody focused. How are we coming get on those back, back legs, back. ladies? Almost got it. Almost got it? That plane's out of gas, so we don't have hurry. hardly any time at all. Get this come off the out of here. Come the gator is secured at this point, so now we have to get it off the runway so the plane can land. OK, ladies, I got the head. We're all on the same side of the gator. Ready? One, Three, two, two one. Up. OK, let's go, ladies. Off the runway here. It's pretty friggin' heavy. Uh, we got on one side, picked the gator up, and we ran straight for the truck. It's over. All right, head, head in first. Head in. Uh, okay. Right, everybody, push. Oh, there we go. All right, tailgate up. One, two, three. Oh, all right. Nice. OK, they got him. You better pull around and set her down. Everybody clear down there. Go down on. Oh, that was cold. At least you're on the ground. The plane finally lands and comes to rest, and I am thrilled. We did our job, and everyone is going to be all right. Ma'am, did you uh, call about a big snake? Yes, sir. Uh, what's going on? It's enormous. It's in my pool. OK, ma'am. Uh, which way? This that way? That way. That this way. way. Okay. Thanks a million. Thanks, ma'am. The client seemed terrified, so I ran straight back to the pool area. Dave had managed to contain the snake until I arrived, and when I saw it, I realized why he needed help. This thing was fast and big. What's going on, man? Dude, we got another python, man. I knew if you called, it had to be bad. This yeah. time, it's a reticulated python. Oh. It's a lot meaner than the last one we tackled, a lot faster. So it's actually a little scarier, in man. fact. So uh, we got to hurry. We got to get in. We got to get wet. OK. Uh, how about uh, you take that side, I take this side? Let's get in. Cool, man. All right. Let him out. Whoa, watch out, Bill. Watch out. Get him behind the head. He grab his. He gets down this floor. There's no telling where he'll go. I got his tail. I got to get his head. Got eyes on the head. He's coming back around to you, Bill. Watch him. Whoa, Whoa lost him. Careful, careful. Watch his head. He's coming back around to you. Grab him, Bill. Grab him. Go for the head, man. Get him, get him. Got him! Uh. Uh. right now, you need to be... Come on. Uh. This snake was fast and a lot stronger than it looked. As soon as I grabbed its head, it started to wrap me. I needed to get it out of there fast so Dave could help me. Uh. Oh, I got him, man. Get him off my neck. He's choking me, Ryan. Yeah. Okay, let's go. 
You got it. Once I got the snake out of the pool and had its head secured, I was pumped. It put up a good fight, but at that point, I was running on pure adrenaline, man. No 10-foot snake, reticulated python or not, was getting away from the Vexcon grip, even if I had to take a swim. <sighs> good job, man. We went to let the client know we had the snake. I wasn't sure if she was gonna come out of the house. Yes, sir. Hello, ma'am. Oh, thank you. I hope you don't mind I took a little bit of a swim. Oh, God, no. Not at all. Did you see the snake in the pool? I, I saw him in the pool when I... Okay. And it freaked me out. I'd never, you know, I don't know where anything like that would even come from in this area. That's what's freaking me out, if it you want to know the truth. Snake. It was a big snake. Reticulated pythons are not native to Louisiana, but some people keep them illegally as pets and then let them go when they get too big. Whether they let it go or it escaped, they put somebody else in danger, and I'm doing the cleanup. What's gonna happen to this snake? Thankfully, uh, David here is a rehabilitator. He's gonna have to take uh, charge of this snake. It cannot be released back into the wild. He's gonna decide what'll happen to it. Thank you, Bailey. Thank, thank you, you ma'am. Thank you, Gates, man shake. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Take it away. Let's get it out. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh. I feel like crap today. I've got a cold. I want to go home, but look, duty calls, and I've got to answer. Even if I'm feeling subpar, I just really hope things go smoothly. Hey, man, I'm Bill with Vexcon Pest Control, and I was uh, supposed to see somebody about an armadillo situation. Yeah, I'm out Scooter here. with the city of Shreveport. Can you help me? And, yes, sir. I'm oh. the golf course superintendent here. Oh, cool. Uh, we've got an armadillo that's uh, attacking a green, number three green. Uh huh. Uh, I'm sure he's going after some grubs. And, yeah. Uh, he's leaving a lot of damage behind. So Scooter, he knows a lot about what's going on with the armadillo. He knows the location, he knows where it's getting under the fence line, and he's willing to take me over there and show me personally. Looks like this job's gonna be pretty easy. So I'm riding through the golf course and I quickly recognized why this place has got an armadillo problem. I mean, we've got a dry season going on and this golf course has been watering quite regularly, setting up perfect conditions for grubs. Here's where all the damage is. All right. This is just from a couple of days ago. Oh man, what a mess. I can't golf with this. No. As soon as we pulled up to the green, I could see all the damage. I mean, talk about the divots and the holes. They, they were more like sand traps. If I were a golfer, I'd be really pissed. obvious where the armadillo was getting through the fence line, but what wasn't obvious was the wooden stake sticking out of the ground that I tripped over. I'm not off to a good start here. Oh. Perfect. Look at this. Armadillos are strong. It ain't easy pushing all that fencing up. The good news is I know exactly where the armadillo is getting under the fence. It's gonna be very easy to catch. Tonight, when the armadillo is coming through here, looking for his grubs, looking for his food, it's gonna come through that hole and uh, get trapped. He ain't going any further than this hole. He's dug his own hole, he's gonna lie in it. Maybe, if I can ever get this damn thing set. Oh, please don't give me any problem on these traps today. I hate that. I am stunned at how many traps I've used through the years and they never, never work the same way twice. It's crazy. They gotta got one hole, two traps, because the first trap, it wouldn't have caught nothing except a freaking cold and a bad attitude. Are you kidding me? I'm really gonna have problems with this one, too. This is good stuff. Got that one. Pull this. Two-handed. Oh, yeah! Finally, looks like I can actually do my job and set a freaking trap for a change. The key to catching armadillos is you gotta fence them into the trap, funnel them in. Armadillo's gonna come right through the hole, he's gonna see daylight. Look right over there, that's where the grubs are. He'll go flying right through here, hit that trigger pan, and boom! I'm gonna get him out of here the next day, guaranteed. There's an ivy everywhere. Fix the thing up there. 
Oh, hey, can I get a ride back? Or sure. Are you going to make me walk? No, I guess I'll, I'll let you ride back. My cold is finally gone. Also, Scooter called. He thinks we may have this armadillo, so I'm heading straight over there to check it out. what I'm talking about now. Scooter's gonna be freaking juiced. He has to come out here every day, start his day by fixing the holes that this guy was digging. Not today. I'm gonna go break the good news to Scooter right now. Come on, boy. I'm gonna get you out of here. You and I are too ugly to be golfing here. Hey, how's it going, Scooter? All right, how you doing? Oh, pretty good. Check it out, Scooter. We got him. All right, good deal. There's the culprit. That's great. I got a hole in one. I uh, found the hole in the fence, set the uh, cage, bam, got him. <laughs> well, Scooter, that's it, man. Just fix that fence area where they dug up under there, and I think that fence will hold the wildlife at bay and keep them off your golf course over there. That'd be great. I sure do appreciate it. All right, man. Thanks a lot, man. Sure, thank you. you Come take back care. and see us. You I'll bet. do that. Like a pretty good spot right here. There we go. Go ahead, brother. You're out of here. All right, man. Go ahead. Eventually, I had to reach in and pull him out. Luckily, he was more interested in checking out his new home than infecting me with any of his nasty diseases. Good area for a nice, quiet armadillo like you. No more golf courses for that guy. I wonder if he's teed off. to check this area out good. Make sure there's nothing in here that can injure uh, any of the people trying to enjoy the uh, haunted trail here. Whatever's horrible, I'm looking for it, and I'm gonna deal with it. Now, this is gonna be a problem. I've gotta determine what is fiction and what is real. They've got a plastic version of everything that I'm hunting that's real. So, in a flash, I gotta determine, is it fake or real? Enter if you dare. Oh, I dare. Okay, looks like I'm into a scare area. We're gonna do an inspection to make sure everything's clear. Looking good, looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and check this guy out, make sure we don't have any uh, brown recluses, anything, uh, any type of venomous spiders. We got a rock over here. Let me flip this dude real quick, make sure everything's cool. Oh, wait a minute. We got a very large coral snake in the wild here. You don't see them, they're very rare. Pound for pound, the most venomous snake in North America. I didn't bring any gloves. Wait a minute. To make matters worse, the coral snake is too small and thin for my tongue, so I've got to hand catch him. Ooh, and it got away from me. The climber, look at that. Yeah, boy, he's good, too. Look how well these snakes climb. This coral snake's extra long, thin body makes it excellent at climbing and slithering through small places. Unfortunately for me, it makes it even harder to catch. Okay, I got his tail. Oh, look at him. Got him. Oh, he's coming up at me. Oh, this guy is super slippery and super vicious. If he whips his head around and bites me while I'm trying to grab him, I'm a goner. Right, here we go. Coral snakes contain a powerful neurotoxin that quickly paralyzes the breathing muscles with respiratory failure occurring within hours. If I didn't get this snake, he would be a huge danger to the children walking through here. Oh, all right. Hey, buddy. Thanks for the hand. I really needed it. One down, but there's got to be more where that came from. I'm going to continue my search and see what other creatures may be haunting this trail. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and look inside the coffin. I'm looking for snakes, I mean raccoons, anything could be in there. Ooh. Holy crap, man. Found one right by my hand, man. I was that close to getting stung. Wow, man. Now that's a nasty right there. My friends, we've got ourselves a scorpion. 
They're native to North America. They do pack a wallop of a sting, man. They are some of the most venomous, deadliest arthropods in the world. Now, I don't relocate scorpions. I'm gonna judge them to die. First, let me make sure that that's the only dude we got. The scorpions don't sit in broad daylight. They get under things. This is the only thing around here and the closest thing to my scorpion friend. So we're gonna pull this back. Make sure you ain't got any friends. Holy crap! There are a lot of scorpions under there. Oh my god, look at that. Just a nightmare. These scorpions are everywhere. I have to act fast. I don't want any of these nasties getting away where they can hurt someone later on. I gotta spray them and kill them. Scorpions, they blend very well in the soil, so we're just gonna saturate this entire area right here. Look at them, just stinging like a maniac. Look at that. Ooh, keep on fighting, brother. These guys sure put up a good fight, but they were no match for my pyrethroid. I was able to stop these stinging monsters and make sure none of them got away to cause trouble somewhere else. Now, this one here is dying from the poison. His uh, system is slowly shutting down. It'll take about two to three minutes for the scorpion to completely feel the effects of the uh, pyrethroid I used, and then he will die. Okay, one last area to check. Now, this looks like just a bunch of uh, props and garbage laying here, but uh, I'm seeing a lot of harborage in here. Let's see what's going on. Now we're going for the mattress, see what's up on this thing. Hello, anybody? Okay, clear on that cabinet. Whoa! We got racing stripe off the eye. That is, that's a water moccasin. Oh my God, you're huge. This guy's huge. I mean, an average water moccasin is three feet in length, maybe four. He looks way bigger. And not only is he big, he's venomous and deadly. I'm gonna get this guy out of here right now. Gotcha! Whoa, strike it! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, come on, man. Whoa! Okay, I got him out! All right, I gotta get him in the bucket. Yeah, head for the bucket, guy. That's where I want you anyway. Come on, let's get away! Oh, he's in this fight! Oh! Oh my god, if he strikes me, I'm freaking dead! Oh, yeah! This water moccasin is so fast and strong, he's all trick and no treat. He's striking at everything. All right, got him. Oh, he's mean. Look at that. Oh, God, look at that dude. Look at that. This bad boy is hissing, striking, and dripping venom everywhere. He wants a piece of me bad, but I got to get him into that bucket. Oh, yeah. Wait before he gets out. Wow, man, if that snake got a hold of anybody, dead. This cannot happen. That's why Mike sends me out here to make sure it doesn't. This trail's got some problems, and the reason why is we got a water source back down here. I'm gonna have to put a barrier down between the water source and the trail here, or somebody's gonna get hurt. I got all the animals out of there, but I gotta keep them out in the future. So what I did is I put a naphthalene, sulfur, and garlic barrier around the perimeter. First thing they're gonna do is smell the naphthalene, which is gonna offend them. They go against their better judgment and continue toward the trail. Then they'll go through the sulfur and the garlic, which will burn. It pushes the animals back, keeps them off the trail, and that way the kids can just have the holiday fun that they're looking for. Doc Morgan? Hey, Billy. How's it going? Uh, we sure are glad to see you. I'm Dr. Morgan. I'm the zoo director and veterinarian at Cypress Zoo. We take in all orphaned, injured wildlife of any kind, and we try to rehab what we can. Our ultimate goal is to release them, and then we try to educate the public about our wildlife in this area. How's uh, the pets I've been catching doing? Very well. Vexcon takes all the animals here that cannot make it out in a natural setting. We bring them here to the zoo, and kids come here to learn about the animals, watch the behavior of the animals, and it's just excellent for education. My office tells me that uh, once again, you have some animals uh, in the zoo area that aren't caged. They're spreading dung, eating food. These are actually raccoons that are coming in out of the wild and making their home in our barn. And we're worried about disease because we do so much rehabilitation here. I mean, if it's airborne, we're in trouble. Approximately how many raccoons do you think we're dealing with? We feel like there's several. Most of the time, we are hearing things and then seeing some problems in the kitchen uh -huh. and in my office and in the walls and above the ceiling. Then we'll go ahead and do an inspection, look around. Uh, if I find any, I'm going to get them out of here immediately okay. by hand, okay. let y'all know when I have a solution. OK, great. Thank Thanks, thank Billy. You. I guess I'm going to have to get up in that attic and uh, check up there. That's where all the noise is being heard. Oh, 
Look at that. There's just a giant pile of feces. Very fresh, smells worse than the zoo downstairs. Wow, you don't have to be a genius to see what's going on here. These raccoons think they own this joint. Now here's something interesting right here. All these voids are loaded with cobwebs from spiders, except this one. A lot of times when the raccoons are zipping through the wall voids, they clean out them webs. And a couple of them wall voids have been swept clean. Nope, nothing down there. Uh, a lot of evidence that they are playing down here, but not nesting here. Maybe go down to the bottom and see if I can open up the bottom of this wall here and see if they're down there. Shortcut. I think they might be in this uh, panel right here. They heard this morning, so the key is speed. We're going right in. The smell is uh, strong, but not like the other end. Oh, my bad. They're right freaking here. I gotta think fast. I can see how these raccoons are getting in and out by their claw marks. So I'm gonna grab whatever I can to try to keep them trapped in so I can try to grab them. I'm trying to pull two raccoons out of a wall. Now I've got them pinned. Now I'm trying to figure out what to do. I think I'm gonna use my other arm and cut back into this wall. I was holding with the right hand, took the saw with the left hand, and started to cut. I had to get closer to these two raccoons. If I ever needed Ricky on a job, it's today. But Vexcon's very busy. Mom had to book two routes. Ricky's off doing something else, and I'm here alone today. Number one down. Okay, I got the second one coming out. This second one, he's a madman. He's biting, he's scratching, clawing. I know he hadn't had his shot, so I'm gonna have to be real careful. If I get bit, this could get ugly. Ow! Stop! Oh, jeez, don't you bite me, dude. Me again. Very intense. Because these are babies, I bet there's a mama raccoon hiding around here somewhere. I heard something. I uh, definitely heard something. Oh, there it is. So I see mama hanging in a cage. She gave herself away when she was trying to communicate after she heard the baby screaming. All right, cage match. Got a wild raccoon in this cage here. Probably about two, three-year-old mama coon. Okay, I'm gonna try to get a cage on him. No, that's not gonna work. Let's try this. Turns out, getting the raccoon into the trap was not as easy as I thought it was gonna be. I'm gonna try the net next. Raccoons have extremely dexterous front paws. Uh, she's using them very well, and she's not coming down easily. Oh, Ricky, where are you? Yeah, here we go. All the raccoons I've fought in the years, I've never had one this tenacious. <laughs> Just when I thought I had her, she jumps out of the netting. She's back on the loose. Come here. Whoa, whoa. Okay. She was aggressive, ferocious, fast, agile. She was trying to escape left, right, front door, back door. You gotta be kidding me, man. She gets away from me again? Come on, man. Oh, he's a fighter. 
hide it too. I finally get her into the cage. She's got to be as exhausted as I am. Oh, sweet. Doc Morgan comes in with water, and as I'm pouring it into the raccoon's cage, I can see she's happy. She's like, thanks for the water, dude. I got two babies, a mama, ready for relocation. I'm going to release on an 1,800-acre lot, plenty of food and water. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. The mama and these two babies, they're going to be so much better off, and my barn is too. Look at that big, happy family reunion. Whitney? Hi. Hi, I'm up. Billy responding on this gator call. What is going on? There's about a five-foot alligator in our pool. And it's not one of them blow-up floaties. No, and this is the real thing. My name is Whitney. I called VexCon today because we have an alligator in our pool. Well, my worst fear about the alligator is my children. I don't know if they would be able to get away from him fast enough. Is he actually in the pool swimming? Yes. Oh, jeez. And kids are in school. Kids are in school. The good news is that Whitney's kids are in school. The bad news is that an alligator that leaves its natural habitat for a pool like this is probably desperate for food and extremely aggressive. Show me where the pool is so Absolutely. I can get on this gator. Yeah, come on back. A gator on the loose like this can be very unpredictable. So I want to get eyes on him before it decides to sneak off and hide. Oh, I see ah, him in there. And there he is. Oh my God. This is not a good situation. The gator is hanging out toward the bottom of the pool, which is going to make catching him even that much tougher. Time is of the essence here, so I need to run out to my truck and get my catch pole and some tape. So here's the plan, don't get bit. The tape securing that mouth is gonna help partially with me not getting bit. This catch pole will be the other tool. As you can see right here, there's a noose. I can slip it over the head, pull it in, That'll get control of the head. I am definitely at a disadvantage. This will balance out that disadvantage. I got him right here. He's fast. I don't want to get him too spooked where he starts swimming crazy. I need to wait for the perfect opportunity to snag this gator because the catch pole will only work if I can get him around the head. Got the head right here. I might try to take this head shot. He moved. Alligator just swam away from me, got him stirred up and spooked. I'm realizing very quickly that my plan is not going to work as well as I had hoped. The catch pole actually creates too much drag when I move it through the water. My worst fear may become a reality, and I may need to go in after this guy. But before I put myself in that kind of danger, I want to give it one more try. Nah, I knew it. I think I'm going to have to go in after him. The gator does not want to come near the surface, and my pole is not working. So I'm going to have to take this guy on in his own territory. And my best chance of not losing a limb is to try to grab this guy by the tail. Going up right now, sneaking up behind him. I'm going to try to grab him by the tail, drag him out. Ah, shoot. Got a hand on the tail, buddy. Took off like a bat out of hell. The gator really has an advantage in water like this. This is where he's at his best, much stronger and quicker than I am. I gotta take my shoes off. Gotta move faster, he's quick. Damn, took off again. The only way I'm really going to be able to get a good grip on this guy and pull him to the surface is to try to swim down to his level in the water and really get close to him before I try to get a hold of him again. I think I might have him here. able to grab the gator and instantly he starts freaking out. He is not happy about being drug out of this water and wants to fight me every step of the way. Oh, he's heavy. Oh, he's tough. Oh, I get him up onto the ground, but I still have a lot of work to do to get him secured. Oh, oh 
me to help him tape the mouth, which I was not prepared for, I guess. It made me kind of nervous, because he was striking, but he did. He seemed to have him pretty well under control. I need you to put an arm bracelet uh, right there for me. Very this nice This was not work. what I was expecting. <laughs> I never want to get the client involved on a dangerous job like this unless it's absolutely necessary. But since I was on my own with this gator, it was great that Whitney was willing and able to help me out. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Whitney, this uh, could occur again. What you need to do is construct a cyclone fence. In order to prevent this from happening again, Whitney needs to have a chain link fence installed that goes about two feet underground because alligators are known for digging under fences, not climbing over them. Uh, thank you so much, Billy, for coming out. I really appreciate you taking care of our family. <laughs> You're very welcome. Have a good day. Thank you. All right, bro, you ready? Oh. Tried to get one last bite on me there, didn't you, Chief? Man, dead Holy crap, is that sick and disgusting. A family down in New Orleans had noticed animals disappearing from their property. So me and Ricky are working with our friend Danger Dave to try to track down this predator. And then we came across some gruesome evidence. Why is everything always so disgusting? Look at this twisted Oh, dude, is that a cat? No, it's it's the worst looking bunny rabbit I've ever seen. Oh my god. It's got his guts yeah, coming out over here. Head saw. Golly, man. That bobcat tore its ass up. He's probably gonna come back and finish the deal here. So let me get this straight. It has some kind of serious king of the jungle cat mutilating things. Yeah. There's a dead rabbit, a headless dead rabbit. It's getting dark, and I'm out here with you. Bobcats are fairly small, but don't be fooled. They can take down a grown man, and they do serious damage with their teeth and their claws. We might have actually interrupted its meal. Then we got little kids out here playing. Wow, dude, that is just wrong, man. I'm gonna go ahead and do something gross. I wanna take a it's little bit really further gross. inspection. Are you kidding me? It stinks. Oh, oh, he tore his insides up. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. The guts man. Are, you know, this it's kind of signature for a bobcat to get the neck. Snap it off like that. It is pretty nasty, though. Got hair where it's coming through the fence right here off that cattle trail. Uh, we've got raccoons, possums, cattle running up and down this area. Perfect tracking and stomping grounds for a bobcat. Yep. Got a dead rabbit right here on the fence line. I'm thinking maybe uh, the bobcat will come back tonight looking for this kill. Oh, yeah. And uh, we need to set some traps and be waiting on this guy. This so is going to do it. We need to get it done. We run out of daylight. All right, well, we got the traps. You want to get the bait? We yeah, got... Uh, I got some chicken. Yeah. Is it live? No, dead chicken. Is that all right? That's all I got, man. I happened to bring an employee. Um, he's been waiting in the truck. What's he got? Well, he's a trusted employee. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's uh, he's done me done me good in the past. Oh wow. Come here. Oh, that's way better than a chicken, man. This is fluffy. Oh my God. Boy, you got a dangerous job. Your little buddy over there don't look too good, man. You sure he's gonna be okay in there? Oh, yeah, he's gonna be. I wouldn't do it if he wasn't gonna be okay. I have a special live bait cage that'll keep him safe and he's, uh, it'll attach to the trap and he'll be unharmed. Awesome. I can guarantee it. All right, let's get the cage here. That, right? All right. Good spot right here, huh? I'll start getting some debris if y'all wanna get into place there. And set the rabbit up, set the trap up. Next time we come here, we're gonna have our bobcat friend sitting there staring at us. I don't know, what do you think? That's <sighs> good. I think we That's got it camoed well, descented. I, I think it's gonna be fine. Perfect. Y'all ready? Yep. Nope. One, nope. More, one no. more thing. What? Better hang us a turkey feather. Turkey feather? Really? Yeah. Why is that? Cats hunt off of eyesight. That's their, their best weapon. Definitely. And they can pick up the flickering of a turkey feather in the wind, yeah? hundreds oh, of yards. Wow. 
and that'll draw that curiosity. You ever heard the term curiosity killed the cat? Absolutely. Yeah. So we're hoping that the curiosity will catch the cat. Okay. So you hang this right about eye level for a human, and it'll yeah. they should pick that up. Well, look at you, man, doing your homework. That's a cool trick. I hadn't heard of that. Yeah. A lot of people look at me like I'm crazy. Is it really a feather? It yeah. works, trust me, it works. You need that string cut? Yes. You know, it makes sense though. Everybody's got a, a domestic house cat. Just, I mean, I can see yeah. a, a cat like doing this right now, like. Oh, yeah. Good job, man. Learn something new every time I'm with you, dude. Cool. The cool. quill is mightier than the sword. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Are gonna be mad too. Oh yeah, man! Look, look at he's in there. The rabbit's alive still. Check it out. We're back at the Ed Myers property where we've been trying to trap a predator by luring it in with a live rabbit. It looks like it worked. The criminal turned out to be one angry bobcat. Oh, is he beautiful, huh? Woo! Look at him, feisty. Yeah. Yeah, look at the balls good. on that guy. <laughs> He doesn't like Ricky. Good job, dude. You did it. Nice work, dude. Yeah. yeah nice work. Man, I tell you, these guys don't last very long in cages, so let's get it out of here. Yeah, you're right. He's under a lot of stress. I got some rod iron we're gonna shove through there and we can pick it up safely because right. them claws are probably <laughs> an inch or so out of that, out of that uh, cage there. Okay, let's do it. This right. is one cage I won't be picking up by hand, that's for sure. Hey, Danger had a trick though. Pretty cool. Yeah, so why is your fingers? You will get them right in the top. Get out of the cage. All the way to the other side. That also locks the front of the cage too. Right, that's the way these safety bars can't lift yes. up. Yes, indeed. Yeah, slightest mistake on a cat like this would be deadly. There we go. Kitty, kitty, like kitty. Cleopatra. Woo! Whoa, almost got out that one. Yeah, if it wouldn't have been locked, there's a chance that, that they might can have get done out. it. Yeah. Come down there, girl. Boy, whatever the heck. Good job, dude, man. Whew. You're a hell of a trapper, dude. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Fantastic danger. Hell yeah. I'm finally able to grab the gator, and instantly he starts freaking out. He is not happy about being drug out of this water and wants to fight me every step of the way. Oh, he's heavy. 